Okay, I have one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. I think we're going to get started. Thank you for tuning in again. And um, we're going to do a painting today from uh, one of my favorite areas of the country in Montana. And uh, I want to give thanks to uh, the photographer that took this photo. Um, his name is Ryan Peruniak. And he is a photographer who lives in Canada, Alberta, Canada. And he works for the Canadian uh, <clears throat> mountains, uh, the Canadian, uh, I guess it's, uh, I'm not exactly sure where he works, but it's in the parks systems in Canada. And he takes some beautiful photos. So he has given me the okay to use his photo that he took of a place called Chief Mountain. Chief Mountain is uh, actually in Montana, but uh, some of the best views like this are seen from Canada. So we're looking uh, from the area north of Glacier National Park in an area called Waterton, uh, which is a part of the Glacier National Park that extends into Canada. And uh, this is the photograph we're going to work on today. <clears throat> so I have a few things I want to try to improve maybe on the photograph if I can. Um, and I'll see if I can point a couple of those things out to you right now. Um, the photograph is pretty good. The mountain's very small in the distance, which gives you a lot of uh, aerial perspective in this painting. And it will be uh, more about the foreground, I guess, than it is about the mountain, because the mountain is so small. Um, I have a few areas that sort of have tangents with each other. This, uh, uh, the tree here in the foreground with these three, uh, four little trees in front of it, uh, they sort of make a tangent with the uh, trunk of that tree behind it. So in my sketch, I will have moved that tree slightly to the right. And uh, let me show you my sketch now and see if it comes through. It's a little bit hard to see, <clears throat> but um, this is, uh, you, can make a, you can make a painting, you can uh, make it about the sky, you can make it about the mountains, you can make it about the foreground. In this case, it's really about the foreground, but the mountain in the distance is really the kind of the star of the show, if, uh, if we uh, want to call it that. Um, so um, I have my sketch already completed uh, on my canvas. Um, I also have completed a uh, value map, which I usually do to sort of give me an idea where I want the darks, lights, and mid-values, and sort of to put this in a, for lack of a better term, uh, make it a uh, pu in puzzle-like pieces. Uh, I still have a big area on the left of this value map that's not uh, broken up into abstract puzzle pieces yet, but we will get to that as we paint. So um, I'll show you the same photograph now with my grid laid over it. The grid is a five by four grid, and uh, it fits nicely on an 11 by 14 canvas. And uh, I think that's the main things. Um, I, sh I should tell you to uh, check out Ryan's work. Um, his his website, he has a Facebook page and he has a website, ryanperuniak.com. And you can go to Facebook and find him uh, on Facebook as well. And you'll see a lot of uh, beautiful photos he's taken. Um, some of them uh, look to be too uh, artistic for me to even try to paint. Uh, I want to leave them alone, I guess, and let him have his own artistic skill going on with these photographs. But this one is one that's uh, very similar to the kinds of paintings I do. So I uh, thought we would give it a try. I sent him a message on Facebook and he graciously uh, agreed to let me use it as a painting for our class today. So um, with that said, I think I'm going to move over to my easel. I have my uh, canvas set up. As you can see, it's toned in um, a dark sienna with thinned down with some liquid and uh, that's what we're going to paint on today instead of the gray I actually have it it makes the sketch a little hard for you to see um, but um, 
I, uh, I think it's, it gives a nice warm undertone and this uh, photograph has a lot of warm undertones in the foreground so by having this color on the canvas it's a, it's a little warmer than it would be if I had used uh, my gray, typical gray gesso background. So um, without much more of that, let me zoom in here and uh, I'll get ready to go. I'm going to flip on the, uh, there's a, you can see the sketch a little bit better there with the uh, um, background and uh, let's see here, okay. About like that. Um, I'm going to flip over to my palette and I'll give, explain my colors to you again. Um, typical uh, same palette as I've been using, it's uh, the Bob Ross paints and I have titanium white, uh, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, um, alizarin crimson, sap green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and bright red. And I add another uh, color over here from Grumbacher, it's called a ultramarine violet. So um, that's my palette, I've been using that for quite a while. And uh, my paints luckily are not running that much today, fortunately, for some reason. They've stuck pretty well to my glass palette here vertically. And uh, I'm happy about that. I don't have to chase paint down the canvas or down the palette. Um, I'm going to use an assortment of brushes today. These are my Treckle brushes, T-R-E-K-E-L-L. -L. Um, they're uh, synthetic mongoose. I have filberts, uh, two or three filberts, two or three flats. Uh, I'll probably just use only those. I may use my bigger brush and I may use a palette knife. I've got two or three palette knives I have here that I may use as well, but I think this will probably do me just fine. Um, okay, so let's get going today. And uh, I'm going to flip my palette over so it's viewable in the lower right and you'll be able to watch me. I'm going to try to remember to zoom out now. I got this zoomed in so as I start coming down I'm going to want to make sure I um, zoom it out so you can see the rest of the painting. But uh, uh, I've been I used some Liquin, Liquin uh, by Winsor Newton and uh, a thin layer of this uh, dark dark sienna. So uh, start with just a little blue. I'm going to pick up a couple of these blue colors um, put a little blue sky in here in the top. Um, uh, with some white in it. Um, just drop my brush almost. Some uh, artists do not really start with the sky. They start with uh, some darker parts of the painting and uh, Put the sky in last. Um, to me, that's sort of counterintuitive, and it seems to be a little harder to do to me for my uh, style, anyway. Um, I'm just popping in some nice blue here, th a phthalo blue, and uh, a little bit of Prussian blue in some spots. There's a bunch of clouds in the sky, but I want to make sure this sky is light enough it stands out behind this mountain. Uh, and you can see, hopefully you can see the colors coming through here, the, uh, um, the little reddish color that comes through from the, from the background canvas. Uh, and uh, get just a little liquid in here to sort of lighten things up a little bit. Um, I'm not using any uh, of Bob Ross's uh, liquid white today. Um, I'm just going to see if I can do it with liquid and my uh, standard paints here. So let's put this sky in down to mountain range back here. The big challenge in these paintings usually is trying to get the get it to look reasonably representative on a 14 inch wide canvas. You know, we're, we're looking at the sky and looking at this mountain. It's probably 50 miles away. Uh, that mountain I know is 
nine or 10,000 feet high. And if you want to check it out, just Google uh, Chief Mountain Montana. Make sure you say Chief Mountain Montana uh, because you will find a Chief Mountain in Colorado, a Chief Mountain Trail in Colorado. It's kind of all part of this Rocky Mountain Range, but uh, Chief Mountain itself is actually in Montana, just south of the Canadian border. So let's pop these little jobs in here like this. Um, some areas I pop in, I usually like to put in a little bit of alizarin in here to sort of redden it up just a little, just a little. And as we move to the right, I'm going to pick up a few other colors and darken it down maybe just a little over here. I put some midnight black in that. These mountains have uh, snow, little crevices of snow on the top. And what you see just below the mountain here is some it's almost like clouds. It's a, a foggy, cloudy area that we want to try to paint in. So uh, hopefully I won't mess that up. Putting in a little more blues. Hope you can see that sketch okay and see I'm getting around it. and. Uh, This is a, a number 10 uh, filbert brush I'm using. Okay, this mountain has a distinct silhouette to it, so I want to try to preserve that. That's my that's my realism. Still using the X stroke. If you remember some of my earlier paintings, I come in with strokes like an X. So uh, that's a it's kind of left over from uh, watching Bob Ross many, many, many years ago. Uh, he always did a lot of his paintings with a big brush, as you know, and he always made these big X X type strokes. Um, put a few clouds up here to give a little texture in the sky, so we don't have just one bland color. Uh, put a few shadows in some areas. The black, the black is helping give me a few of those. So I see that, that yellow or uh, that uh, reddish color coming through, which I think gives a nice warm undertone to these blues I'm putting on here so it doesn't look cold and miserable which this area can look cold <clears throat> because it does get very cold up here okay a few minutes on that sky I think we've got a good start so that sky makes up about what, 25% of the painting maybe. So one of the things you try to do when you put a composition together is look at your your masses of objects, whether it's sky, mountain, foreground, and you try to figure out where you want to emphasize how much of that those objects. In other words, do you want my sky to be, if this were a skyscape, the sky would be probably three quarters of the painting and I have a little bit of a mountain in the foreground here. If it were a mountain painting, I would have probably one third sky and about two thirds mountain and a, a one third of foreground. Um, if it's a foreground painting, which this is uh, based on the photograph, um, I'm using about 25% sky and maybe about 25% of my mountain area and some background and then the rest is going to be uh, 
over 50% is going to be um, foreground. So we have a lot of layers in here. I don't know if you can see those very well, but <clears throat> uh, I have a lot of horizontal lines sketched in here that give me ideas of where I want to <clears throat> put the, the different planes of this background coming toward the middle ground, coming toward the foreground. Um, I'm thinking this may be just about right. I'll put a, just a few more lighter blue colors in here. Kind of give us some more sky. Change this over here a little bit. Okay. Don't overwork it, just make it look nice. Okay. All right, <clears throat> now let's, <clears throat> I'm gonna put in just a few, some mountains that are sort of in the distance back there before I start, as I come forward. Um, there's some areas here that I want to be have that atmospheric perspective back there. And there's some over here. I'm just using the uh, violet, the uh, ultramarine violet. Another layer. I've got sky, I've got clouds, I've got a very distant layer of mountains. <clears throat> and I'm going to start coming forward now. I'm going to get just a smaller brush here and start working on this mountain. That might even be too big a brush. A little flat here. Um, so I'll hold off on my sky brush. I'm going to start picking up some, uh, some darks here for this mountain. Back here we've got maybe a little more blue in there, just a tad of blue. Over here we've got some more that are similar color. Just slightly darker than what's behind it. <clears throat> and we've got some over here that has a little bit in it. up some browns here to get a little bit of this grayish brown color that's on the side toward the light. Light is over here. So I'm just adding some light in there with some white with uh, Here we have some. A lot of small things going on back there, but um, 
I want to make sure we have captured as much of it as we can. So I'm over here and it's a little darker. This comes down. All right. And now let's take a little of the uh, almost pure white here. I'm going to put just a tad of gray in it, but I want to get some some of that snow back in here. We've got a bunch of little things of snow that are hanging down in this mountain. Over here we've got a number of little things. There's a bunch of them over here. So I'm really getting detailed here with this, which is not the old, not the big brush technique for sure, but um, we're trying to make this look like we've got um, something going on this mountain back here that's very specific. And then they start getting whiter, actually it starts getting, uh, as we come out in here, we start getting more, this is where the cloud formation is in here actually. You're starting to see the uh, clouds that are laying below the below the top of the mountain. Um, over here, we got some more. So there's just quite a few things going on here. Um, Go back and get a little more white. Tone it down just a fraction. I'm making sort of a swirling stroke here, circular almost. It's giving me this cloud formation. Okay. Go back and get some of this out of my brush here. Drop the brush right on my computer. Hold two or three brushes in my hand and so I'm putting a slight little top on these clouds to make them look like they're fluffy. Okay. Get that lighter on top. There. Okay, a little bit of an abstract shape up there. Okay, let's go back and put a little bit of this, a few more of this mountain in over here. Okay, just some darks and mix it up a little bit, add some a little bit of texture. Okay, I think I stop on that now and call that just about finished. I think I may back and touch it up a little but right now it doesn't look too bad to me 
All right. <clears throat> Let's get back here and if I'm going to need more of this blue or not. I think I'll just get that out of my brush. Keep going here, folks. All right. I'm going to use this. Give me a flat here. This uh, number 12 trackle flat. We're going to start coming down now and putting in some of the uh, background trees back here. I'm going to use uh, combination of alizarin and um, sap green to give me sort of a reddish brown. Maybe add a little uh, sienna in there. Let's see what happens back here now. We start in. We have a number of rows of trees and interesting stuff to stick in back here. It's so small you can't really see what it is, but I'm going to be sticking it in. Red, the red, <clears throat> the alizarin uh, grays down the green. If you use a any kind of a complementary color, you can gray it down is the term. I'm making this more have more uh, undulations in it than is actually there because I want the eye to move across it, but I don't want to make it a straight line. If you've heard me talk before about <clears throat> abstract shapes, about uh, getting rid of geometric shapes, I follow one artist who really focuses on that in his uh, teaching. I found that it's very, very valuable to have these lines that are not straight. This actually visually, this photograph looks like a straight, straight line across there. If you paint that, you'll be making a mistake because it looks like a snake. And you don't want to paint snakes. I'm getting enough of a snake here the way it is. <clears throat> but I'm just using these colors over and over and adding some uh, different values, different uh, colors in there. And uh, bring it all the way over here to this edge, feather out the top so we have some sort of merging of the uh, that first row of distant, distant evergreens back there. Over here, let's... Okay, so I'm getting a nice varying layer of trees. And it's not a straight line. When you look at it closely, you can see some ups and downs. If I leave a straight line there, your eye just slides right down there and you just go right on to the next guy's painting. You don't even spend any time looking at mine. So I want to give you something interesting to look at back here even though it's 45 miles away. So these aren't a lot of little pointed things. These are sort of flat. I'm using this flat brush and it's forcing me to uh, make a lot of uh, wide pointed and we'll start lighting it up put a little bit of land value here I'm bringing in some ochre lighten it up even more put in a little white maybe to brighten it up just a little back there I want these I want to have alternating layers of light and dark. 
And the more I can do that, the more I can give you depth. Okay. So you can see a slight lighter color back there in the distance between those two dark shapes. So as I come across here, I'm going to make this dark and I'm going to leave that behind it lighter. And all of a sudden you see more depth. You see another layer of trees. You see a little bit of land back, back there. And now you see another layer of dark trees here. Okay, and I just did that by just leaving a very light horizontal layer. I'm painting as the land flows back there. It actually is a long plane, a very long drawn out plane. Okay. Start changing these colors, eventually get off of ochre and get to more of a orange color here shortly. But right now, let's keep it this way. So in any of your paintings, when you're trying to get depth, really try to see if you can make layers on top of layers. And contrast is the, is the method. Every layer you can create gives more interest, more depth. Bring in a few more sort of a green, greenish color, picking up a few green colors in here. Okay, now that, see I'm still not even 25% of the painting and I've got sky and clouds and mountain and snow and fog and trees and land and trees. So I have many, many layers already. So all of that goes to help this give a nice painterly feel. You can't, it's really hard to duplicate nature on a 14 inch canvas. Okay. Okay, just pulling up in some of these things like this gives you a very nice. All right, as we start coming forward now, I'm going to pick up a little more red in here, pick up a little uh, sienna, bright red, ochre, some of my yellows, Indian yellow. And uh, back in here, I'm going to start seeing if I can get in a few. Picked up some of that dark <coughs> color. Lighten it up, put in some yellows. lot of variation back there. It 
So as I make this lighter, you know what's going to come in front of it. <clears throat> I'll be putting another darker layer in front. So when I'm painting the, the land, I paint brush strokes this way. When I paint the trees, I paint vertical brush strokes. You paint the way the object grows or flows. Okay. A little too much canvas showing through. All right. Stop, step back, walk away, take a look. Okay. Okay, I think it's time to get a little more trees in there, a little darker trees, maybe some olive colors. There's my little filbert here. Small filbert, there we go. I want a small filbert. And right in here I'm going to start putting in some trees that have a nice olive color. I'm going to get that with sap green and my midnight black. Maybe a touch of ochre. Okay. I want them to be dark because they're anything that's vertical is darker than anything that's horizontal usually. Um, so right in here we're going to start putting in some trees that are in front of that area back there that I just painted. There's a whole stand of trees back here that just Make another layer, and I'm I'm not trying to define them with a lot of pointy points on them, even though that's what the photograph shows. I'm basically giving them sort of a haircut in some cases. Some have points, some have flat tops, some have different widths between them. You want to make these things using any kind of a Painting like this, you want to vary, vary the, the height, vary the width, vary the gap between things, vary everything you can think of. I'm picking up a little purple in there, or, olive, or lavender, lavender, violet. Start to see that. Got another interesting color back there. Be careful, don't make a snake. Okay, a white. Little There's a lot of little white uh, dead trees back in here. Um, pick up some more of this orange color and get in there. They're either dead or they're they've gone dormant for the fall and are waiting for the spring to come back. Start picking up some more of this orange. Pop it in here. 
sort of a pinkish orange color not not quite as red as ooh that's pretty red picked up a nice Okay, so I'm getting some bright colors in there now. The red is starting to draw your eye a little bit. So I want to try to make your eye move from the front here, back, along, get back to that mountain, and then move around the painting. So hopefully that's going to come through on this. trees oh, I want to get this red over here I have to get it over by these trees I'm sort of painting around some trees back here that I'm going to put in later I'll leave that as it is Okay, so how many layers do I have? Many. Okay, stop. I need a uh, water break. <coughs> okay, so I'm getting some very interesting shapes back there. I'm going to put in some of this. I don't know what you call it. It's just a lot of little, lot of little f fuzzy trees back here. White with some gray in it. <clears throat> Probably could use my fan brush. That's a Bob Ross trick to pull the old fan brush out and stick back here and pull up a lot of interesting shapes with it. I'm just using this filbert and uh, there's actually a whole line of these sort of dead or <clears throat> dead trees that go back through here something like that echo, echo the color from one side of the painting to the other like it looks, looks of this so far. Um, I'll make sure I have my... When I start painting in that area I have to move my palette overlay if I remember. Sometimes I get so engrossed I forget <clears throat> what you're seeing because I am the cameraman. And I am the video editor, and I am the painter. Get to do it all here. So I'm just trying to put in some colors that are going to help define this area, but I want them to be redder than that. Uh, 
bright, bright oranges. There's a let's see if this cad, cad red and cad orange make a. Oh uh, yeah, that makes a bright orange, doesn't it? Start popping in a little hints of that in here. Put in some. Need another paper towel. I want to put in some. Uh, <clears throat> a little bit of this lavender color here to start countering this orange. I'm just mixing colors right on the canvas now. Starting to get underneath my palette over there, I'm sure. So I'll stop painting over there until I pull some of this out. Yes, I am getting under my palette. Okay. Let's see, how's that? Now yeah, move my tape. So I know my palette is up here. Just sort of getting in a, a under layer here of some of these colors to start filling this out to bright bright oranges in here. Just roughing in here, getting in the some of this underpainting. Keep track of where my trees are over here. Pick a little shadow color. fast that foreground starts going when you start uh, putting in big swatches like that. Step back. Okay folks. A lot of red, a lot of cad, yellow, even some pure cad yellow in there it looks like in some places. At least that's Pop 
pop it in here and get this covered. Shadow color makes and graze down that orange. This Aggressive. Sort of cleaning out my brush here. have that whole canvas covered. It's pretty close to uh, the colors in the photograph. I usually take a few liberties with colors in the photograph, but um, if it's a photograph I like, I maybe stick to it closer, but uh, definitely have to uh, Try to make it look as representative as possible. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Now I may want to go in and start working on some of these trees, these uh, middle ground trees. There's a whole bunch of trees spread out all over the place. And uh, I think I'm going to uh, see if I can uh, work on those. This, get me a flat brush. <clears throat> Grabbing my number 12 flat. Okay, so we've got this tree. If you remember the photograph, that tree, the pine tree back here was right behind the trunk of this foreground tree. And I moved it, I moved it over. So with that in mind, I'm going to pick up some dark colors. Prussian blue, sap green, Lizarin gets a really, really dark. And come in here and start putting in so we're gonna work down one side of this tree. And see what it looks like here. dark up here. See when I got values on top of values there you can't see the tree in front. So let's keep going here with this dark and darker. some ochre. I don't want the left side of the tree and the right side of the tree to look the same. I want them to have distinct differences. Except it's looking like a nice straight triangle now, which is what I don't want. We don't want symmetrical shapes. So let's bring this out a little bit over here. Like that. Maybe some. Something 
like that. So eliminate those symmetrical shapes if you can. Now I have some other trees back there that I can actually pop in to help block this in a little more, make it look like more part of a, a stand of trees. So I'm going to bring this tree out over behind this tree that's in front of it. up a few colors here that pull this together. Okay, so this tree looks like it's nicely glued on right now, which I don't like. So We'll work on that. Pick up a few highlight colors here. Get some bright yellows maybe and some white. Lighten it up a little bit over here. There. Okay, now you're seeing a more abstract shape. So what I do with the bottom, I can just put a big trunk down there, make it look like it's stuck in the ground, or I can come back and grab some of this base color and the yellows, and just sort of pull it together like this over here. So there's a trunk of some kind inside there. We might come back and put that in, but right now let's just leave it for that and come back and start putting in a few of these other little bright trees. There's some, get some color in my brush. I'll be better. Make a little stand of light. Hard to see it. It's a little bit too. Might be a little stand of aspens or something back there hiding. There. Okay. And then there's a lot of these old trees that just kind of hang out here, like like right in here. There's a tree that just sort of stands there all by its lonesome more back here. So hopefully I can leave a path for your eye to go back here and get back into the background. That is ideal if I can do that. Put these together as a clump. This may not look like the photograph now folks. I'm starting to react to the painting itself rather than the photograph. Did I get up underneath the... Oh, I didn't. I guess I managed to stay away from the... Did get a little bit underneath the palette there, but let's put a few more things here. Darks. I don't want to block that off. I don't want it to be blocked in so you can't get back there. I want your eye to be able to go back. This 
back here almost looks like water. Um, I'm not calling it water, it's really land, but it has an interesting uh, look to it, almost reflectivity, which I probably could call it water, but out of respect to Ryan's photograph, I will not make it water. Okay, can you see a visual path that kind of winds your eye back that way? Gets you back toward the back? <clears throat> Hopefully that's what I'm doing. People are going to think that's water. When I look at it on the camera, it definitely those vertical strokes say water. Sometimes I try very hard to make that look like water. This time I didn't really try that hard, but... <clears throat> There it is. Now we're getting some of these these sort of deadish, uh, reddish, brown, rust-colored things that are sort of laying out here. big vast plane something you don't want to walk across because it would take you quite a while to get there you might want to walk out there a ways but I don't think you want to walk to that mountain from here so I'm trying to think about my value map that shows a little bit of a dark area here uh, so I'm trying to uh, Mimic that a little bit. Reds, alizarin, sienna. Put some purples in there. So I got a good bit of color going on, different different colors, different uh, textures. And here we've got I'm gonna come back and be putting in some <clears throat> these sort of dead dead branches and uh, things that sort of point you to the background here in a minute. So I'm just sort of making abstract shapes in here. Nothing, I'm not really trying to paint anything specific. I'm just trying to make sure I don't have <clears throat> rectangles and squares and circles and straight lines and all that sort of stuff. A few dark spots in here. Okay, stop, walk away. We've been going a little over an hour. This is moving very, very quickly today. But I have several trees to put in, several other dead <coughs> branches that are laying on the ground here. So let's see if we can move on here.
all right. How are we going to put these trees in? I'm trying to see if I've got a nice thin, thin brush here. That's too thick. Maybe I'll use my flat, that's number four, treckle. <clears throat> I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pop in some trees. Hopefully, if it doesn't work with this brush, <clears throat> my backup plan will be to use a palette knife. I'll see if I can get enough paint on here to really lay it on. Like it starts in this area right here. It's a little too wide. But pick up a little bit of lick one to make it a little thinner. I think this is a good place to use the old <clears throat> Bob Ross script liner. Get some thinner, lay it on there, get it good and runny. See what happens here. Need more thinner, get it good and runny. Make it roll it to a point. <clears throat> See if we can come in here and do this guy. Take him right off the top. So you see now I don't have <clears throat> the trunk of this <clears throat> pine tree is not tangent or overlapping or being overlapped by this tree. We'll use this script liner over and over here. I'm going to start picking up some gray color, maybe get a little, uh, start looking for some branches. I've got little branches that float off of here all over the place. bit darker.
left side of that tree is slightly darker than the right side because the sun is <coughs> more coming from the right than the left. Let's see, Scarpy made it today. Hi, Scarpy. Welcome. over something like this big old tree that's dark back there you have to make sure you got a lot of paint a lot of thinner you gotta cover it up Tons of little branches sticking out off of these trees in both directions. Another tree here that I haven't even started yet. It's uh, sort of right in here. Like that. And it's got a bunch of old branches off of it. I could spend a long time here working on branches off of these trees. Tons of little things sticking up here, like little trees that want to be big trees. More, more, more. Tons of little things floating around here. Popping in a lot of little gray jobs here, gray trees, dead branches. One over here. Oops. Let's get some more paint. <clears throat> Put this guy to sort of point him back that way. A few things over here. So there's a lot of little debris, a lot of stuff that's sort of floating around in here. I'm stopping, get back and look at that, and see what it looks like. Yeah. 
feathers. some darker stuff here for the little more shadow here on the left side of some of these. Got it too thick. colors in there to sort of fill that out. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Break down and grab this little fan brush. <laughs> Hard to get away from these things when you learn how to use them and like what kind of effect you get. <clears throat> little fan brush I'm using here has got reds and rust colors. Sienna, like right in here, this would be some, straighten this out a little bit more, there, a few darker colors in there for, this, this brush just has these bristles that just work so <clears throat> well for this kind of thing. Okay, let's see, I think, pretty close. Let me, I'm gonna put just a little more shadow on <clears throat> the left of these trees at the top on, this, on the left side here, which I'm covering up here, palette here. Too dark. a little more definition to that <clears throat> kind of fading into the background because they're the same value as the sky so let's put a little bit of a shadow color on his left side okay folks I think a few more debris things down here can I do here? Stop fiddling around. Maybe make this a little smoother in there. There we go. Okay, I think. Hope you like this. And um, hope you give it a try. I will have the sketch out <clears throat> on my website very soon. And uh, so be sure to uh, go to Ryan Peruniak's website, ryanperuniak.com. And uh, I'll have a link in the <clears throat> bottom of the video when I put it out there. And thank him for the photo. And uh, check his website, check his photographs. He's got some beautiful work. And I really appreciate him uh, letting me use it for this painting for you guys. And. Uh, Zoom in here and do a little scrolling around to let you see what's going on back there in the background. So I didn't put all the branches in those trees that were there. I could be uh, spend a half a day putting all those little branches in, but uh, I think that's. Uh, going to do what I intended to do today and uh, I'll say uh, thank you for watching once again and uh, look forward to another uh, paint along next Wednesday. 
I will be doing a watercolor uh, live class. So that will be the 22nd, I believe. And uh, same time, 1 o'clock, and uh, till about 3 or so. And uh, then I will be off until August. So I won't be doing any more uh, live videos. I may be putting paintings up on my channel, but I won't be doing a live broadcast <clears throat> until September. So until I see you again, uh, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>